guys, welcome to AgoInSimpleSnation.com In today's video, we'll be talking on the role of drug administration And uh, talking on the role of drug administration, the role of drug administration simply means how drugs are being administered to patients in simple terms So basically there are two terms or two major classifications of the role of drug administration which are the local role of drug administration and the systemic role of drug administration now talking about the local world of drug administration it involves what application into sites of desired action that's the sites where you want the drug to act that's where you administer the drug that's for the local world of drug administration while the systemic code of drug administration involves where the road through which the, the drug goes into the blood before it starts systemic circulation so before we move further talking about the various roads of drug administration we'll talk about the factors that determine the choice of road of drug administration now you should know that there are several factors that determines the road through which drug are being administered and some of those factors include one the physical and chemical properties of the drug now talking about the physical property of the drug the physical property of the drug in the sense of the state of matter of the drug that's the form which the drug exists it can either be solid liquid or in gaseous state that's slg for short so if the drug is in solid state liquid state or gaseous state it will this is likely to determine the road through which that drug can be administered for instance drugs in solid and liquid state can only be administered through the mouth but drug in gaseous form can't be administered through the mouth then the next is chemical property of the drug now talking about the chemical property of the drug we'll look at the solubility the ph and the irritancy of the drug the solubility simply means the ability of the drug to mix up with substance either water or lipid that's the fluid content of the blood by the ph of the drug also that's whether it is acidic or alkalinic then the lastly irritancy of the drug that's when we say irritancy we simply refer to the tendency of the drug to cause irritation to the sites where it is being administered so that's for the first one so the next which we'll talk about now is the site of desired action now the site of desired action will determine where the drug the road through which the drug will be administered that means if the drug is needed to act only on the skin the drug might just be administered directly on the skin of which is under the local road of drug administration the next is the effect of GI secretion that's the effect of gastrointestinal secretion now the secretion of the GI tract that's the stomach content the gastric juice and the rest of them they have effects on various kinds of drug so if these drugs are affected by GI secretions they are not advisable to be administered through the oral roads that's through systemic roads of administration through some systemic roads of drug administration like the oral road urgency of effect now in an emergency situation it is not advisable for drugs to be administered through the oral road due to the delay the delay in effect of the drug so due to urgency the drug might be decided they might be chosen to be administered through another route this is because various drugs are available in different forms or in different states which can be administered through different routes so some drugs might be required for treatment but because they need the need effect of the drug is required urgently this drug can be administered through some other route that will have to be quicker or faster then the next is rate or extent of absorption this is still in relation to the urgency of effect now if the drug is absorbed faster it might be it might through the mouth it is advisable that it is taken through the mouth or if it is not absorbed faster it can be take it is advisable that the drug is administered through any other route then talking about the next one we have a patient's condition that's either if the patient is vomiting or the level of consciousness of the patient now talking about the patient vomiting a patient that is vomiting is not advisable to receive anything by mouth so the patient is placed on npo which means new pahora npo meaning new pahora so you shouldn't take anything by mouth and the level of consciousness of the patient for instance unconscious patients 
can't be given the drugs by mouth that they can't be given medication orally because they won't be able to swallow it so most of them are given through other routes aside the oral routes so now we'll move on to the various routes of drug administration the first one which we'll talk about is the local route remember we said what well, the local route involves the administration of the drug into the site of action or on the desired site of action now one thing about the local route of drug administration you should know is that it has decreased tendency for adverse effects because the concentration of the drug in the blood is low and uh, another thing is this drug acts only on the sites where they are being administered remember that so the one we'll talk about now is the topical the topical roots now talking about the topical roots this topical route involves the administration of drug either through the either on the epidermal layer that's on the skin or through endothelial cells that's on the surface of endothelial cells or mucous membrane such as the gi mucosa lining like in patients with peptic ulcer they are giving drugs through the oral route but they have local effects only on the mucous lining of the gi tract without going into systemic circulation then another one is the intra-articular route that's drugs are administered into the joint directly into the joint they only have effect on the joint while the some of the examples of drug administered typically as those drugs that are applied on the skin just on the surface of the skin and they are not absorbed into the bloodstream so they don't go into systemic circulation the next which we'll talk about now is deeper tissues now this or uh, this is similar to the local the topical route of drug administration but in this talking about the partition it involves the use of let's say syringes to administer the drug to the patient sometimes this might involve the administration of drug into the posterior orbital cavity which is also referred to as the retrobobular region that's the posterior portion of the eyes that's for the deeper tissues and talking about the next one now which is arterial supply this involves the administration of the drug into the arteries directly into the arteries and the purpose of administering drug through this road are mainly for diagnostic procedures and drug administered through this road are either administered through the vocal or femoral artery for diagnosis for diagnostic purpose so the next which we will talk about now is systemic roots. Talking about the systemic roots of drug administration, there are the various systemic roots of drug administration, which includes the oral road, the sublingual, the buccal road, the rectal or vagina, the parenteral road, which are subdivisions, which includes the intravenous road, the intramuscular road, the intradermal, and the subcutaneous lining. Right. We also have the inhalation route, the nasal route, and the cutaneous or transdermal route. Now, talking about the oral route, the oral route is one of the easiest routes of drug administration because it can be administered by the patient himself once he's told how to take the drug. That's once he knows the dosage to take and take it on his own with convenience, and uh, the drugs are not easily absorbed into the bloodstream except through except for some selected medications so this oral would simply involves putting the drug in the mouth and taking it down with water you'll see an image of it on the screen then the next is the sublingual or buccal route now the sublingual route involves the placement of the medication underneath the tongue Due to the high increased number of blood vessels within that region, the drug are absorbed, is absorbed faster into the bloodstream, thereby it passes, it escapes metabolism by the liver. Same thing with the buccal roots of drug administration. But for the buccal, the drug is placed in the cheek. The sublingual, the drug is placed under the tongue. So take note of those two. One is placed in the cheek and the other one is placed the one is placed in the cheek, that's buccal, and the other one placed underneath the tongue is sublingual. Now, these two roads of drug admission, that's the sublingual and the buccal, one disadvantage of it is that well, the patient is likely to spit out the drug because he needs to leave the drug in the mouth for a particular duration. So, due to the prolonged stay of the medication in the mouth, 
the patient is likely to spit out accidentally without knowing. So the patient should be watched carefully while on this medication. Now, the next is rectal or vaginal. Now, drugs administered through the rectum are inserted into the anus, and drugs administered through the vagina are inserted into the vagina. Now, some drug, some example of drug administered through the rectum is the um, suppository, that's like the phenac suppository, which is a place of, sorry, the hana canal called the orifice, and uh, the vagina, example of drug placed into the vagina, mainly uh, contraceptive, such as misoprostol, which are inserted into the vagina. This drug, when administered to the patient, the patient is advised to remain in bed for about 30 minutes to one hour. So before administering the drug, the patient is advised to empty his bowel or bladder before taking the drug. Now the next which we will talk about now is the parenteral route of drug administration. Talking about the parenteral route of drug administration, it mainly involves the administration of the drug using a syringe. Now when there are various types of parenteral route of drug administration, which includes the intravenous route, the intramuscular route, the intradermal route, and the subcutaneous route. Now let's take the first one, the intravenous route. Intravenous route is one of the quickest routes of administering drug because the drug is administered directly into the bloodstream through the veins. Venous, remember, intra means into and venous means vein. So intravenous means into the vein. So this drug is administered into the vein and uh, they are mainly in liquid form. That drug administered through this route are in liquid form forms before they can be administered. That's all drugs administered with the parenteral roots are administered in liquid form. So the next is what the intramuscular. Talking about the intramuscular route of drug administration, it involves the administration of drug into the muscles. Now some of the muscles through which drugs are administered are the deltoid muscle, the glacial muscle, the Femoral, that's the rectus femoris and the rectus lateralis muscle are also sites for administration of medication intramuscularly. By coming back to the intravenous route, let me check something in quickly. The intravenous route of drug administration involves the administration of drug into superficial veins. Take note of that. It is administered into superficial veins. That's veins that are slightly below underneath the skin. So the next now is intradermal route of drug administration. The intradermal route of drug administration involves the administration it's an act in which drugs are being administered into the dermis. That's underneath the dermis. Remember, intra means into and dermal is what dermis. So the drug is administered into the dermis of the skin that's directly underneath the skin. But lastly, the subcutaneous route of drug administration is involves the administration of drug under the skin, that's the subcutaneous layer of the skin. And the uh, example of drug administered through this route is the insulin, yeah, insulin medication are administered through the subcutaneous route because they are slowly, this drug are slowly absorbed into the GI tract. Now we will talk about the inhalation route of drug administration. Talking on the inhalation route of drug administration, this involves the breathing inhale of the drug class inhale and exhale. So inhalation route of drug administration involves the breathing in of the drug to so it goes directly into the lungs and begins to add its effect there. So that's the inhalation route of drug administration. By the nasal route of drug administration, the drug is just applied under the nose and it is with time absorbed into the blood stream from there. An example of drug administered through inhalation route is what well, is the sabutamol, the ventolin inhaler and the sabutamol. Yeah. By the nasal route of drug administration, there are some vaccines that are administered through the nose. The next now which we we'll talk about is the cutaneous or transdermal administration of drug. Now the cutaneous administration of drug involves the application uh, act is an act in which the drug is administered on the surface of the skin using patch, that's transdermal patches, 
this patch contains a particular dosage of the drug and the patch is placed is sticky so it stays on the skin when it is applied and a particular amount of the drug is taken into the bloodstream from time to time to make in order to maintain a balance in concentration of the drug in the blood plasma so the transdermal patch also can stay for a longer time once applied for days or more example of this drug is artificial cocaine which helps to which is used for patients who are addicted to cooking. So quickly let me change something into the local road of drug administration. The local road of drug administration that is under the topical road of drug administration it also involves the administration of drugs into the eyes, the ears in the eyes and the ears in particular, that's the eye drops and ear drops are administered into the implants. It's, those ones fall under the topical route of drug administration, that's eye drops and Thank you very much for watching and please click on the subscribe button and don't forget to share the channel to others. Do also recommend the channel to your other colleagues and stay tuned to the channel. Remember, when you subscribe to the channel, you'll be the first to be notified whenever a new video has been uploaded. Thank you.